it's extreme programming has values, and, and I think it's really important when you look at a process, kind of what what it values. Okay, because it's there are there are a lot of different processes about how to how to develop software, and if we look at extreme programming's values, they are simplicity, communication, feedback, and courage. The and they're important. Communication is important because a lot of times we rely on written forms of communication to kind of communicate. And it's really kind of a low bandwidth communication. You, you're you relying on the skill of the person writing the thing and the person reading the thing and that they interpret the things the same way. Uh, extreme programming values kind of direct communication. And uh, you know, so some people will say, oh, well, you know, you can't scale direct communication. Well, uh, that may be true, okay? So uh, other values, you know, feedback, one of the things that extreme programming values, uh, uh, oh, but, but, sorry, but did that, I interrupt that, Well, I'm just going <laughs> to say that, that you, even if it doesn't scale, that doesn't mean there isn't a lot of communication that can be done directly. You know, if we say we're only going to use high scale communication, we're cutting ourselves off to an awful lot of communication. Sure. We get a lot of value out of just having people know each other. Right. <laughs> and be able to share some experience together. Yeah. You know, say, remember what we did here? That's what we need to do here. Mm -hmm. You know, looking at the screen. Well, video right. is taking direct communication scale more, right? Yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. We, a little bit we forgot to bring a computer. We yeah. could have written some code. <laughs> uh, and then feedback. Feedback says, you know, what we want is we want people using software as soon as possible. And then you so, want to feel what it's like. Right. Mm -hmm. And and you want to respond to it. And when you have something to say, you say, well, gee, now that I know what I wish I asked for, why not have that? Right. And so many times I've, I've run into situations with building applications where you get, you know, you deliver the system and they're like, oh, I, you know, it's not exactly what I wanted. It's, I'd like it a little bit like that. Well, what we'd like to do is move that experience sooner in the process as opposed to later uh, and get that feedback. Uh, as you know, as we go, and evolve the system for the way that the customer wants, the way the user wants, uh, as opposed to kind of wait for long periods of time and say, "Chunk, here it is," and then come back long periods of time. So, those are the things that extreme programming values. And if and if you look at that and say, "Those are the you know, I want a process that has those values," uh, extreme programming is one of those. There are a number of other processes that have those have those types of values. Uh, the benefits are that, you know, if you have a group of people who sit in close proximity to each other and work together, there is a kind of shared understanding, shared knowledge that is built amongst the team that allows them to kind of move faster through the process. Um, and the fact that, you know, from a feedback perspective, we're, get, we're building the right thing. Uh, that that in and of itself can can kind of drive the whole thing and and move it forward, and deliver something that somebody that something somebody really wants and needs, as opposed to kind of speculating about what people need and so forth. And I think that's the kind of uh, there's a lot of practices in extreme. There's 12 different practices in extreme programming, but that's the kind of that's what I kind of distill it down to and uh, and think are the kind of key ingredients of it. I, we should actually talk to Ward. Ward is the, uh, uh, according to uh, Ken Fack, this is the way that Ward programs. Yes. <laughs> so that's my take on extreme programming. But we should. Well, well, well I, I actually, uh, I, I love to program. And, and I, I know lots of people got into programming because they love to program. And then they get on these projects and they get ground down and they say, you know, this isn't what I thought I was going to do. You know, that, uh, that I've lost the joy in programming. And uh, I think with that joy comes the creativity that we expect to find in programming. Uh, but we also have to understand a lot of what we program isn't for ourselves, it's for other people. And so uh, um, we look for ways to uh, organize groups of people to write programs. and, and uh, uh, we accidentally looked to uh, traditional engineering fields and ended up taking the dynamics out of programming, the softness of a program, and making programs actually uh, hard and brittle and stuff like that because we borrowed uh, principles of organization from uh, 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 disciplines you know, that, 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 that uh, are pretty hard and brittle. 
uh, what's what's wonderful about programming is that it is it is uh, a logical that 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 a program a program can be written to communicate to another person and that communication to another person could be more important than the actual utility of running the program because it says how to do something and and when we say we we want to you know uh, uh, do a top down command and control organization of a team and we just want to get a bunch of uh, turn the crank coders and we just want to control them so they don't go out of bounds we don't want them to be creative we want them to just work and work and work what when you look at the code we get it's not code that has much to say it might have utility it might not have utility but it 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 isn't code that's a message from an, a mind to another mind Absolutely. and so um, uh, I was fascinated by that. I picked up this fascination from my experience with Smalltalk, which is where I learned objects, and, and I was amazed how much about objects I could learn by reading that code. You know, the way it was set up, you know, this is going back into ancient days, but they, they really did believe that you had to read the code to understand it, and it was a lot of effort, but I believed in reading code. And so when I started commercial development, I was in a research lab where I could take three months to understand small talk but when i started doing commercial development i said we have to achieve code that speaks to each other but we have to do it on a on a on a budget you know we've got deadlines we've got commitments we've got to produce plus we have to meet the needs of somebody other than us and uh you know it was kind of out of uh, uh, an accident that i wasn't sure what to do but i knew what i didn't want to do i didn't want to give up on having code that I could read.